dear friends welcome to this edition of vbs neuro med this is a series of videos called it corona radiata uploaded in youtube this is the area we are covering is neuro anatomy lectures neuro anatomy series i have called this as lockdown lectures or study at home videos because right now we are going through uh, a, this pandemic and uh, um, we are all working from home i hope the students will uh, go through it and uh, uh, get ready with the theory part of this uh, um, topic we will hope that very soon we will be able to uh, go back to the institution and uh, take up the practicals the topic in this neuroanatomy series is spinal cord descending tract the principal descending tract that we are going to discuss is the pyramidal tract now this tract very specifically mentioned as anterior and lateral cortico spinal tract in the spinal cord this tract pyramidal tract is in two parts an anterior and a lateral the anterior part is in the anterior funiculus of the white matter the lateral is in the lateral funiculus of the white matter nothing in particular about the anterior however it's a tract that slowly disappears beyond the cervical region that means it's destined for higher uh, spinal segments however the lateral one is more important one it is large and superficial to it are the two tracts anterior and posterior spino cerebellar tracts this is a is a important lateral relation with a great clinical significance because as you go down the cord i repeat as you, we have we have shifted it to the opposite side as you go down the cord this tract namely the lateral cortico spinal tract becomes more and more superficial or coming more towards the surface the reason is the posterior spino cerebellar tract becomes less and less in lower levels correspondingly this tract becomes this tract that is the lateral cortico spinal tract becomes more and more superficial as it does so in the lateral funiculus its location is precisely known and it is immediately behind the ligamentum denticulatum that's why i have put the ligamentum in a blink mode that blinking triangle is the ligamentum denticulatum that means the neurosurgeon while operating will use the ligamentum denticulatum of that particular spinal segment as the key landmark behind which he will be able to access the lateral cortico spinal tract this tract as a component of the pyramidal tract is motor in function it may be necessary for certain disorders to access this tract for uh, creating certain lesions uh, we will discuss that more in the clinical uh, areas next the bulk of the pyramidal tract is supra spinal in location i repeat what you saw in the spinal cord is only this much because this cord the this uh, tract is coming to synapse with the lower motor neurons that means uh, the cells of the uh, anterior gray column it comes for various spinal segments whereas the upper motor neurons 
for this particular tract are located in the cerebrum. They come all through the cerebrum, come through the brain stem, then uh, in the medulla, finally into the cord. Now, that is a very interesting, very long course. We will need to see it in, in, in a little detail before it reaches the spinal cord. See, here is a coronal section of the brain. You can see the cerebrum in coronal section. Immediately below the cerebrum, the big brain, pons and the medulla are visible. Part of the medulla is visible. Now, this tract, corticospinal tract, begins here. Now, this is the motor cortex of the cerebrum. And I have shown the motor homunculus. You can see the disproportionate representation of the human body in this cortical area of the cerebrum. The motor neurons, that is the upper motor neurons are located here. From here, their axons come down and they all merge uh, in an area, namely the corona radiata. They merge into an area called the corona radiata. Now, that area, you, you saw the fibers, that's the corona radiata. From the corona radiata, the fibers go down into the uh, lower part of the cerebrum. This area, I have labeled it as the internal capsule. Now, internal capsule that means this area needs a little uh, description. Corresponding internal capsule on the opposite side. Now, those two uh, circles, dotted circles, is the thalamus. Now, the internal capsule is, uh, is located in between the thalamus medially and lentiform nucleus laterally. I repeat, lentiform is lateral to the internal capsule and uh, particularly the posterior limb of the internal capsule and the thalamus is medial to it. You see, the posterior limb. Now, this is a little confusing. Let's back up our understanding with a horizontal section of the uh, cerebrum. Uh, at the roughly at the level of the intervertebral foramen, the foramen that connects the third and the uh, lateral ventricle. Now, here is the horizontal section. Blinking in blue is a V-shaped area. Now, that area is the internal capsule. The posterior limb of the internal capsule is uh, is also there the posterior limb of this um, shining uh, V. You can see that the posterior limb medially it is related to the thalamus and laterally both the anterior and the posterior limbs are related to the lentiform nucleus. I repeat both the posterior and the anterior limbs are related to the lentiform nucleus. Now this is very important. You can also see incidentally the two lateral ventricles a little anteromedially and also here you can see the posterior uh, horn of the lateral ventricle. I mean anterior horn in the anterior part and posterior horn in the posterior area. That's just an incidental observation. Doesn't have any bearing in this discussion. Next, we have reached the midbrain and you can see a dark region, a dotted black area. That area is the substantia nigra. The corresponding arrow representing the fibers of the corticospinal tract, pyramidal tract, is shown by the blue arrow. I put it deliberately on the opposite side so that there is no overcrowding and hence probably no confusion. Next. Suppose we take a cross section at this level 
roughly at this level maybe let's say upper midbrain we will be able to probably understand the orientation exactly how these fibers are located because this, this has a lot of clinical significance we will now have a horizontal section of the upper midbrain now that's the horizontal section you can see there are two areas an anterior crus cerebri and a posterior tegmentum separating the two is the substantia niagara and further behind it is the round red nucleus i repeat there are two components in the midbrain anterior crus cerebri and a posterior tegmentum the structure that divides these two is the substantia nigra and this is what you saw in the previous uh, uh, photograph as dark dotted uh, area substantia nigra further behind it is the red nucleus these are all the key points i am just introducing for the midbrain so that our tract under discussion namely the pyramidal tract will now be uh, shown now you see that is where in the crus cerebri roughly in the middle two thirds of the crus cerebri this tract is located corticospinal uh, there are two components of this tract a corticonuclear and corticospinal the corticospinal is what we will see in the spinal cord the corticonuclear ends in the brain stem now a small an add on point may be clinically useful there is some kind of a clear lamination of the fibers as they descend the fibers destined for all the supply to the head region that means control through the lower motor neuron they are located medially and on the other end are the fibers of the lower limb so the rest of the body is in the middle uh, so this this lamination is is very very useful clinically incidentally this pattern of lamination has been found uh, across the spinal cord in various levels next we have moving down the tract has further gone one step down and we are in the pons and let's take a cross section in the pons to understand where it is fortunately it's very easy to remember that the pyramidal tract is always at the front uh, close to the front surface or the ventral surface of the brain stem all through the three parts midbrain pons as well as the uh, medulla oblongata that's that's incidentally easy to remember now you see that's the pons cross section there are two parts in the pons just to introduce the pons cross section a posterior tegmentum and an anterior basal part now in the anterior basal part you can see two large uh, nuclei a, a cluster of nuclei now that i will put it in dotted circle now that one is the corticospinal and the corticonuclear fibers combined next we have moved next to the other region namely the lower part of the brain stem medulla oblongata next now you see we are creating a, a small uh, squarish area and that area we will examine in in greater detail because that square is nothing but the brain stem to continue further we need to know a small bit of detail about the external features of the brain stem particularly to go further down uh, the um, tract because this is where the crossover of the pyramidal fibers is going to take place now looking at that square we will now proceed to see an external view anterior external view of this square and particular that's in other words that is going to be the brain stem ventral exterior view you see now that's the area i am going to show the area marked by this rectangle is the brain stem in that further i have enlarged it you can see the medulla pons and the midbrain location 
pons is very easy to locate because right in its middle vertically running is the basilar artery. The two vertebral arteries are running on the medulla on either sides of the pyramid. And the only other leftover item is the midbrain higher up, higher than the uh, pons, above the pons. Next, you see that particular dotted circle in between the two vertebral arteries is uh, the pyramid uh, on the medulla oblongata. It's a swelling. It represents the pyramidal fibers deep to it. Therefore, we will examine that in, in greater detail. But before that, once again, uh, we will outline the pyramid. There are two, one on either sides of the midline. Remember that. And exactly at this level, uh, at the lower end of the pyramid, we are going to take a cross section and we will call it as uh, the lower medulla cross section. Now, this cross section is very important because this is where we are going to see the key crossover of the fibers and this is called the pyramidal decussation. Now, here is the cross section of the medulla. It looks quite, uh, you know, not much of details, but then we will have to identify the details. Now, you can see uh, there are two cross sections of the two I mean, of the vertebral arteries, one on this side, one on that side. And in between is that swelling pyramid. Now we will we will mark the pyramid because that's what is uh, important for our discussion. Now that circle is the pyramid correspondingly. And it's a slightly darker area compared to the rest of the um, um, cross section because it's, it's fibers, the white fibers. Next, watch carefully. Marked in dark are the crossing fibers of the pyramid. Roughly about 80% of the fibers cross over to the opposite side, both sides. This goes that side. This. And on the other side, it forms uh, a new tract, which is the lateral corticospinal tract. I repeat, that's the lateral corticospinal tract. The leftover fibers, about 20%, which do not cross over will remain as the anterior spino, uh, sorry, anterior corticospinal tract. I repeat, or anterior uh, corticospinal. So that is what you saw in the previous photograph in the anterior funiculus. The, the new addition in the lateral funiculus is now the lateral corticospinal. It is nothing but crossed fibers of the pyramidal tract. Next, we are almost at the uh, in this particular, we are almost at the lower uh, end of the medulla, roughly the pon, uh, spinal cord medullary junction. And if you watch carefully, you can see a small white area on either sides of this crossover that is actually the disappearing anterior horn of the spinal cord, I repeat. That is the slowly disappearing anterior horn of the spinal cord because we are at a junction. As you go higher and higher up, we go more into the medulla proper and this anterior horn will completely disappear. Now, that's another interesting observation in this particular photograph. Now, that's the decussation I have just shown um, using an example of the railway tracks. These trains themselves, you can think they are the um, incoming, Im uh, downcoming impulses uh, from the uh, cortex. As they go down, these trains will cross over from one track to another by these cross connections. It is just to help you understand the uh, point. Therefore, coming back, we are going through the slide. Therefore, this is the two components of the uh, pyramidal tract and what we are seeing here is the spinal component of the pyramidal tract then in other words corticospinal fibers remember earlier we had added corticonuclear but then as we cross the brain stem the corticonuclear fibers end and only the corticospinal fibers uh, are left over of this let's 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 see some amount of correlation with uh, imaging anatomy here is an MRI of the brain 
coronal section along with the spinal cord. This is a very, very interesting MRI scan because it has gone through and through just like that specimen we saw in the earlier discussion of uh, coronal section. You can see the cerebrum. You can see the uh, parts of the diencephalon. You can see the midbrain, pons and medulla. All of them are there in this particular uh, section. Therefore, this is a very useful section for our understanding. There, we will try to identify the key parts before we proceed further. Remember, this is an add-on slide because nowadays imaging anatomy is as important as the regular gross anatomy because our entire uh, diagnostic apparatus in radiology is uh, hinges on these imaging. Now let's identify the structures. That's the midbrain, the dark area. The larger area going down below is, is the pons and that is the medulla. Further, all the details below it is the spinal cord. Therefore, we have been able to identify all the parts of the brainstem and its continuation, the spinal cord, midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata, and lastly, the spinal cord. Now, remember, it's the same slide as before. I repeat, I will go back. This is exactly the same slide as before. You can see uh, the only difference I have made is um, the I have inverted the photograph in the sense color inversion. In this case, what is happening is whatever was black in the previous slide, uh, because of the technical constraints, I'm not able to go back to the previous slide. The software is not allowing. But remember, you can. You, can go through the previous slide and then come back to the slide. Whatever was black in the previous slide is now white and vice versa. This is because if I have to show you some components of the uh, deeper parts of the cerebrum, I need uh, a little whitish or a grayish area. Therefore, you can see very prominently the internal capsule. Medial to it, slightly darkish gray is the thalamus. And above these two, corona radiata. Above these two, corona radiata. I mean, all this we saw in the wet specimen. We are fortunately able to recall the same in this uh, imaging MRI scan. Now that was a, a, a short uh, walk through uh, across the MRI uh, scan. Now, a few words about the lateral corticospinal tract. Remember, the anterior, we have already mentioned, it's, it's, it's stop short beyond the cervical. So there's nothing much to discuss. But the lateral one has somewhat a lamination pattern. That means the fibers that are superficially located are actually fibers that descend more down the spinal cord. That means these fibers, the superficial fibers, are destined for the lower segments of the spinal cord. Obviously, it, it goes without saying the upper segments are meant for cranial segments. Now, this interesting photograph of a railway track seems to be very appropriate. I just got this from the internet incidentally. You can see the crossover. After crossover, they are forming the lateral corticospinal tract. And it's just a, a good comparison uh, for the previous discussion. Now, summarizing what we have learned so far, back to the same wet specimen, coronal section of the brain and the brainstem, cerebrum and the brainstem with the medulla and a part a little below the medulla, uh, the immediate part of the spinal cord is visible. Now, because it's a summary, I'm not going into the detail. I'll just show you a short animation. Now, the upper motor fibers 
discharge the uh, electrical impulse uh, at the cerebral cortex. Now that's the upper motor fibers discharging. The axons do not stop here, but they go through the coronoradiator. Remember, at no stage there is any synaptic uh, delay. It is straight down in one shot to the lower motor neuron. Therefore, this, this reflects very well on how fast the fibers are transmitting the impulses and how precisely the reflex functions can be executed. Therefore, please be warned that those stars that I have put are not synaptic locations. It is just a, a discussion stop for our uh, understanding. Now, from the coronoradiator, the, the uh, impulse goes down to the internal capsule. Remember, in the previous discussion, we have seen this internal capsule sandwiched between the thalamus and the lentiform nucleus, not shown here in this particular uh, slide. Further, the impulse goes down into the midbrain, and that's the crust cerebri. You can see the substantia nigra, more medial uh, to it in location. And now, through the lower brain stem, it goes through the basilar part of the pons and the pyramid of the medulla. Now, this part, I need to pause, take a little uh, focus. I will use a dotted circle and draw your attention to this zone. Here is the lower medulla and here we expect the decussation to take place. Now that is the decussation. It's crossover. It has moved to the opposite side. From there, the fibers, remember, the crossover has no delay. There are no synapses. It is only for our understanding. We have put a star and that star is not a synaptic location. Please be warned. From here, the fibers go with the lateral corticospinal tract in the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord. So therefore, this is just a small animation to help us understand the functionalities of this uh, tract. Here, the upper motor neuron through its axon, which is a long one, goes right down to the spinal cord and uh, synapses with the anterior horn cells of the respective segments. You can imagine the uh, length of the uh, pyramidal tract, particularly of the fibers reaching the lower sacral segments, very, very, very long distance, just like we have some very long distance trains, same thing we can use for a comparison here. Next, this is once again in a, a nice photograph I could get. As the impulse is coming to the lower medulla, you can consider the train to be an electrical impulse. You can see the crossover of the uh, fibers. The impulse are, are just like electric train. Uh, they have no way of uh, going anywhere else this side, that side, because they are surrounded by connective tissue everywhere. They will go only and only across the um, axon, uh, which is already laid down in its position. And if there is a crossover of axons, this train will also cross over to the opposite side. Fortunately, we don't apply 80%, 20% in this example, I, um, because it, it's just not logical. The whole train crosses over to the opposite side. Friends, that was a, a brief overview of the pyramidal tract with particular reference to the corticospinal fibers. I am sure this may have helped you at least partly understand the topic in your first study in anatomy. Some amount of it will get repeated in physiology and other uh, subjects. But I am sure if there are any doubts that you have, you can feel free to write to me. Here is my uh, email ID. You can also preferably put it on the YouTube blog area immediately below the video. There also you can give your feedback.
this was a video under the title corona radiata a series of neuroanatomy lectures this particular topic that we have covered today is the pyramidal tract thank you my dear friends i hope you have benefited from the subject i wish you all the best and uh, hope to see you all as early as possible for the practicals thank you